Welcome to science class. Uh, here today, it's Thursday, April 9th. Uh, you're gonna need something to write on your science journal if you have it at home or if you have some paper. Um, uh, you're gonna need that here today. Um, and uh, what we're doing is we listen and take some notes. Um, they're not Cornell notes, just write down information you think might be important. Um, since it's a video, you obviously can pause it uh, to, to write down most important, uh, most important things. All right, so today uh, we are talking about how geologic processes, so that's just things happening to the earth, uh, part of the rock cycle, um, how they create natural resources. Those are just the things that we use around uh, the world, uh, air, water, uh, energy, uh, food. Uh, we're gonna focus on water uh, and how they're unevenly distributed, which means they're just how they're, they don't show up evenly everywhere but they are, um, there's a lot of them in some places and not a lot in, in other places. All right, so let's get, uh, let's get going. So we're gonna talk about the Colorado River today, uh, which is famous uh, because it goes to the Grand Canyon. Uh, so we'll start with the geologic processes. So this is uh, just showing how it has been carved out um, here. Uh, this is what we talked about before, uh, before spring break, um, a little bit here. And you'll notice uh, how old it is, you know, 200, 300 million years. Um, and that is uh, before dinosaurs. So all the, the time when dinosaur fossils would have showed up, those were all eroded uh, eroded away. Um, and then um, it's it was important. I mean, people lived here in the Colorado River for 10,000 years, um, not in other places, but here, uh, mostly because of this water resource, um, including a lot of mining operations as well, uh, which happens near, near water places. So it's an important river uh, carved. Um, and how the carving actually works, how it starts, um, is, um, is you see these are pieces of rock and you see you get small cracks, um, water deposits, and then when they freeze, they expand, just like a soda can in the freezer, uh, which open them up even further. Um, and then that gets us to the carving and the erosion that's, 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 that's shown uh, as water moves. This water collected, into these areas that were broken apart by rock and ice, um, possibly wind as well. And then it kept carving and kept carving and the flowing in this river is what is what carved out the Colorado River, which this is a picture. This is a famous, I believe it's called Horseshoe Bend um, uh, here. So we have the Colorado River being created um, and holding water here. And if you look up here, very dry, arid uh, locations, and then you have water and green things growing. Uh, because the water is there, but the water, but water's not staying and staying up here. So we have this uneven distribution. All right. So what does that have to do with us and how it's, how is it unevenly? Uh, uh, sorry. So how does the water get from where it starts to the end of the Colorado River's uh, journey? Uh, so this is just the top of the mountains in the Sierra Nevada mountains, uh, the Rocky Mountains. And this is where the water um, will, uh, uh, will start is that snow and as this melts as the springtime happens so it flows most rivers including the arkansas river uh, as as well and then as it flows you can see this is a good sized river all right um here uh so we flowed down it says here um, 50 miles south of, of utah so colorado river runs out of, utah, out of uh, colorado into utah um this is in canyonlands national park uh we're in a you know looks like a helicopter or airplane view um, and so we can see this is a pretty good river uh, from the height we're at. Um, and it's carving these really unique, unique shapes. Um, and then we're getting down into uh, Arizona, starting Arizona. We can see how wide and deep this is. Um, at this point, the Colorado River has been dammed up a few times. All right, but we can kind of start to see, all right, see, uh, see how large it is. If you look right here on the sides, this discoloration, this shows how much the water level has changed over about the last 50, 60 years. So even at this point, we can start to see it starting uh, to not be as, as wide as, as it was not, not too long ago. Um, and, and we see this continue, this is a really high, this is the Grand Canyon, so the south rim over here. Uh, it is a mile from this part here to the riverbed. So it's a long distance, this is a good flowing river here. Uh, people, it's, it's deep enough that people float it and do rapids. Um, uh, through parts of this, not some other parts aren't great because you probably will die. Um, then um, 
we have some issues. This is the city of Phoenix, um, and the Phoenix gets a third of its water just pulled it right out of the right out of the Colorado River, um, and so and so we start to see some uses of this of this water. Um, um, you think about Phoenix and these cities. Uh, this is arid, um, desert-like conditions, and the only reason we have all the green stuff growing and people able to live here is by pulling water mostly out of the Colorado River because there's just not much. Uh, not much uses. Uh, other issues are food. Uh, most of our lettuce is grown uh, in this area, um, in Colorado, um, in Arizona, and in California, which pulls water out of the Arkansas, or, sorry, excuse me, out of the Colorado River um, as, uh, as, as well. So our food choices, and it's not just uh, vegetables, plants that need things, but think about um, any meat products, um, you know, they have to have water to eat eat the foods they do so they grow and then we eat so um you know i, I believe the statistics is for every pound of, of beef it's 50 gallons of water um so so our 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 needs for food um is is also driving some of the issues with uh with the colorado river uh this is a little canal they dug to get water to phoenix um, and tucson uh, which is another large city in uh, in Arizona, and this is just pulling water out of the Colorado River, where, where it started. Remember, it was a really big river, a uh, lot of flow, um, and this is what happens when the when the Colorado River makes it to Mexico. It's flowing towards um, um, the Gulf of California, um, in, which is near the Pacific Ocean. Um, and at this point, you can see it is a stream, and you can notice as the water level gets so low, uh, these are plastics and things that have washed down the river. Um, fertilizers, muds that have all uh, just been washed down in the river. But the biggest deal here is you can see how small the river uh, the river is. And finally, just before it gets to um, the ocean, this is what it looks like. So there's no water. It's not making it to the ocean. We have pulled all of that water um, all of that water out. Um, and this is this is what it looks like. The only time they ever get water to the ocean is, uh, if you notice here, is if there's flooding, basically. Um, and it's because we just basically pull the water out. Um, water been flowing here for you know thousands of years, um, and our overuse of it um, that that um, that kind of causes this. You see a lot of man-made reasons why the water is not getting here, even though geologic processes have been bringing the water here uh, over long periods, uh, long periods of time. Uh, the big deal here is to understand that. Geologic processes let resources, especially water, go in certain places, not other places. That's why so many people live in certain places. Little Rock is where it is because of the Arkansas River. Benton is where it is because of the Saline River. New York City is there where it is uh, uh, because the Hudson River and the ocean. Um, and, and so water is not evenly distributed, places where we have fresh water and can live uh, as well. So what I want you to do now is on Google Classroom, you're going to create an explanation. You're just gonna write a short paragraph to explain how geologic processes make some of the Earth's resources distributed unevenly. All right, if you go back to the other slides, um, erosion uh, causes water to pool, a freshwater pool and, and gather in certain places, lakes, rivers, streams. Uh, and that's where people usually go and, and live. And those geologic processes happen before and today. Um, and then our use of the water uh, also makes makes a big deal as as well. So go ahead and construct that and make that uh, uh, explanation. We don't need a whole lot. I think I'll probably put, um, you know, at least three sentences. Uh, but remember, talk about the geologic processes and also talk about um, how that water, because of the geologic process, water is distributed unevenly as well. If you have questions or comments, please hit me up on that uh, on Remind in Google Classroom or email. Uh, and we will be meeting at four today uh, for uh, Zoom. So hopefully we'll see you there. Have a great day.